This week in comic books from DC, their Black Label edition, we get some John Constantine and Sandman Universe collision happen going on. I want to kind of talk to you about that. In the lands of Marvel, we get Avengers Twilight. And what happens in those Twilight years of your life? You get juiced up on Super Soldier Serum, and you go kick ass again, apparently. We'll discuss that and a few others. And in Independence, it's all about the G.I. Joe this week. We got G.I. Joe 303, and we got Cobra Commander that came out linking the Energon universe together. And it is just beautiful. And one other independent, the Mandrake Project. You probably didn't hear about this one out there in your mainstream comic book world, but, you know, aging rockers want to party too and make comic books, apparently. All that and a few other comic books. But first, as always, I have to say some coffee. Coffee sales are down. We got to juice those sales. Juice those sales. Let's go. Hey, what's going on, folks? This is your boy, Pocan Joe, to talk to you about Coffee Brand Coffee. We serve people that are tired of gimmicky advertising and branded companies that want to lecture you. At Coffee Brand Coffee, all we want to do is serve you freshly roasted coffee wherever you're at, whenever you want it. Consider Coffee Brand Coffee. Check us out, check our reviews out, and use promo code Pocan Joe or the link down in the description to save yourself some money. Give me the opportunity to get you a delicious cup of coffee. All right, you wonderful weirdos, now that you got your coffee fix, let's talk about this week's comic books. And we're actually going to do this backwards. I'm going to start with Independence this week because I have a little bit of a bone to pick. Ooh, just a little one. And the first one that we're going to review is The Mandrake Project, right? So you're probably wondering, I didn't see this a whole lot. This, this is a COA, by the way. We'll talk about this in a second. So, this is actually a pretty good comic book. Bill Sienkiewicz. Bill Sienkiewicz. I always have trouble with that dude's name. Please forgive me. Um, did the cover on this. The artwork's done by a whole other team. And this is brought to us by uh, Bruce Dickinson. Um, if you don't know who Bruce Dickinson is, he's a fantasy rocker. If you're not familiar with that term, think 1970s vans with the dragon, the lady, and the guy with the sword on it. There's a whole music genre to describe that type of artwork, right? Immigrant song, you may know that one. That kind of fits into that realm. That's the kind of rock and roll he has, and apparently he's coming out with a new album, and, you know, he kind of sprung board himself into the comic book community here with this way oversized, awkwardly sized, too, right? Like, it's small here, it's giant square. And then for some reason, right? And now, I, I said the comic book was good. The story's solid. It's exactly what you would see in a fantasy rock type song. Guy fights the wizard because he's got magical powers too, right? They got a whole thing here on YouTube as well. But back to this thing. First off, this awkward comic book doesn't really fit in a comic book box anywhere unless you place it sideways, which you don't do, right? And, uh, I, I don't know why you did this. Certificate of Authenticity. Um, a COA. Uh, there's no signature on the thing. It's not a unique title or not a not a unique cover, like a limited cover of one in 500 or anything like that. And you put, of course, the quote on the back here because you need the name drop. But what you didn't know about our boy Bill is he likes name drop too. So I'll just read what this says on the back. This is kind of weird. I'll, I'll talk about my problem with it here in a second. Bill Dickinson, The Mandrake Project, is hands down the biggest, most complex, surreal, delightful, twisted behemoth of a project I have ever had the privilege to be involved in, and I worked with Alan Moore. So, yeah. So what? Uh, is, is that, like, all right, so first off, new comic book creators out there, people thinking about creating a comic book to kind of marry your artistic work out there which i totally support by the way and if you're doing that please let me know but there's no sense in like um fluffing the market here and that's all this is right there's no added value to this card right here and it says that this comic book is authentic i know that the moment i open it up people aren't rushing to like copy this it's a good book I said that. It's good artwork. I said that. You should just kind of let it stand on that instead of just saying that it's super special because it's got a piece of cardboard on it. Some words. Uh, other than that, like, I would have loved this comic book, but I'm really kind of seeing a lot of this kind of 
I'm going to fluff the market as much as I can to get what I can from it to justify it. Now, this comic book cost me $10. Honestly, compared to an average standard comic book, you can say that's a lot of money, but go look at any comic book on a Kickstarter campaign or somebody that's out there doing it on their own. That's about right between that $10 and $15 range for something unique, right? Like, I think we can all agree on that. But to sit there and... and oh, man. Also, COAs, can we just be done with those? Like, I, I can make a COA for anything you got going on out there, and it will look just as authentic and fresh as anything else. It's, oh, God. It's like those titles that you can get from Scotland. That thing turned out to be a scam, too. So that's kind of my rant this week, right? I, I promise the rest of this will be much better. But like I said, if you want the comic book, definitely get it for the comic book. It's a great story. It's got great artwork in it. It's got this whole cryptic, Illuminati, magic vibe to it. And there's a whole genre of music associated with that. Just whoever's running Dickinson's uh, camp, uh, marketing campaign here, you do, do, do. he may want to meet some people in a comic book community before he starts trying to sell to them. Because this is actually kind of insulting. Just on, on the small bit. All right. Let's get to happier stuff now. All right, starting off with our independence this week, I'm going to kick it off with, to, yeah, Cobra Commander. Launching this off, we finally get the connection on the bad guys of the G.I. Joes inside the Transformers universe. I love the complexity of all this. It's working great. We find out Cobra Law is still in canon, right? Remember Cobra Law from the movie? That's right. That's still in canon, and they had a Decepticon in there. I'm not going to give it away which Decepticon they had. Right, but he's there, and that's what kind of helped Cobra Commander get kind of like a technology edge on his other scientists and people in the community that mostly want to believe in organic growth. Right, that was kind of the whole thing with Cobra Law. Right, we're all organic, and then Cobra Commander, as a scientist, came along and found technology. Where did he get that technology from? Apparently, a Decepticon. Really cool, and he's getting launched into the works here as well. As all of this is part of the Energon universe this is great i love this story and i love where it's going and i just god and i'm so glad that there's so many member berries in there but it's still giving me a new story at the same time it's the perfect balance i love it pick of the week here we go boom 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 there you go something a little different for you guys all right moving on creep show i pick these up every now and then because this is just a fun read two stories in here and i'm kind of happy i picked this one up blindly just grabbed it uh it deals with burning comic books or destroying comic books which was a thing during pre-code horror i think sometimes the comic book community makes it a huger deal than it actually was yes there was a a, a hearing on in the senate about it but there's a, a hearing about in the senate about everything honest to god there it, it's kind of ridiculous and the whole burning of comic books wasn't like a countrywide thing you know it like popped up in a few places here and there with mostly your uh, overzealous christian organizations that just felt comic books were bad now during this time if you actually look at some of the comic books that they had a problem with back then uh yeah, things haven't changed very much. Like they were, they were fast and loose with their comic books back then, and of course, children always being kind of the narrative to read comic books. That was kind of what they thought they were protecting against, not realizing that well, adults have been reading comic books since the time of the Wild West, <laughs> right? Cowboys were actually very literate too, by the way, just in case you thought they weren't. So right dime store novels stuff like that they were all just really just cheaply made comic books to carry around with you so yeah i like the comic as uh, creep show kind of addressing that issue and kind of doing it in this fun way where yes comic books are for children so the adults or the, the overzealous religious have to destroy it. that's pretty much what they were kind of goofing on in here and having fun with it at the same time so definitely thumbs up love that Next, G.I. Joe. So we're finally getting off of the issue one, issue two. We're going to call them by their legacy numbers, 103. So we get this launched off. And this is ingenious, ingenious. Hana and, and, and the team are just super intelligent. You know that they're pulling from things they know, meaning experiences in the military. 
So this kind of does a, this little thing that we always see kind of gear up right before a war, right? And it kind of does it. First thing we start seeing is who's going to be teaming up, and we find out that uh, Serpentor and the AI bats are going to kind of team up, and they're going to kind of t start kicking it off, right? So G.I. Joe being prepared for this, one thing they do is start setting up counterintelligence, bringing Spirit in. Love Spirit. Loved his little action figure. Loved him in the cartoon. Super happy he's in this. And this one, he's kind of taking a more technical role, right? That uh, the eagle in the sky. No pun intended there, but it, it is what he is. And, of course, he catches a couple of the AI guys kind of spying on him. And immediately, the very first thing you do when you find out somebody's spying on you, is you do not point at them and start screaming and, Oh, I got you, blah, 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 I'm so much smarter. Nope, what you do is you start feeding them misinformation. That is that. That is counterintelligence 101, getting it back out there, the narrative that you want to tell, and make it as ridiculous as possible is another one. Because that creates dissension in the ranks. That wasn't in the comic book. I'm just throwing that out there for you. So as that happened, um, yeah, it, 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 I don't want to get too much into war games and Cold War stuff. But that's kind of the setup there, right? You start feeding disinformation. The next thing, ultimately what you do is you always want to hit soft targets, right? So Pintor kind of does this thinking that the newer Snake Eyes and his girlfriend are going to be the easier targets there. Sends a hit team to go kill them. So you kind of start poking and prodding around to find weaknesses and information as you do this in hopes that your enemy either doesn't catch you or is just stupid. Apparently not. G.I. Joe's on it. Dog on it. Where's Cobra at in all this particular? Nothing really yet. We kind of got a little something that happened in Springfield. Nothing overly important. It's, it's an insertion, right? We're going to start inserting because we're still poking for information as the bad guys go. It's great. It's just great. I can't, like, I could do a whole review just on this stuff alone, but we got to move on. We got to talk, we got to talk about DC this week. DC, Hellraiser, and uh, the kind of marrying of the Sandman universe in this. So this is Hellblazer, Dead in America. This is taking a weird term. So Constantine has a new group that he hangs out with. One's his son, which he definitely knows right now, and one is a random Scottish lady who's got a little bit of a temper. A little bit on the stereotypes there, but I've I've met an angry Scottish woman before. She she was angry. But moving on. So what we got going on in here is that John Constantine, again, because of his misdealings and the fact that he's kind of a douchebag, screwed something up in England, he's gotta grab his friends disrupt everybody's life, bring them to America, and uh, kind of find an answer for this new issue that he has. Also, he's dead, by the way. You should know that going into this. He's dead. But still walking around because magic woo-woo. You knew that word was coming. So, as they're traveling through, we kind of get a quick introduction of uh, Mr. Dream himself kind of having a conversation with him about what he needs him to do and the whole while we find out that John Constantine is looking for of course his buddy man thing who might be at a golf course or is he the golf course just kind of left you hanging on that one all right moving on we got Justice League Godzilla and King Kong so this is not an in-between issue but the ridiculous notion issue. <laughs> if you read this, you kind of know what I'm talking about. All right, so the uh, the monsters have been withdrawn. If you have been catching up with this, we got monsters everywhere, right? And Godzilla's purpose in this comic book, as well as has been in other lore with him, is kind of he equals the balance there of things, of monsters and people, right? He's the great equalizer, if you will. So all the monsters are being drawn away by a beacon because the bad guys, the Legion of Doom, right, are kind of taking advantage of this situation. And one of the one particular happenings in here is one of the um, beasties are going to come attack Atlantis. Now Aquaman can't have that, neither can, you know, uh, the rest of Atlantis because Atlantis. So they got a dome shield up, monster comes attack, Justice League shows up. They're having a little trouble beating the sucker because it's so huge, powerful, and apparently it can breathe an electrical storm underwater. 
gonna leave the science alone on that one. We're just gonna keep rolling with this. So Aquaman does the thing. He does a straight up Clash of the Titans moment where he releases the Kraken, right? And of course he's got a Kraken. It's coming out to fight, and then Godzilla's coming to fight too because you've got to equal the balance. It's a three-way fight now. I don't know what that means. So they're gonna kind of fight it out. This comic book issue was kind of. I don't know, hinky at best, right? It's all a completely ridiculous concept to begin with. Your, your boy gets that. But I don't know. I, I'm just not an Aquaman fan. I think that's what it is. The stupid fish whisperer. Get out of here. Riding seahorses. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, not my thing. So next, we're going into Marvel, and we got Avengers Twilight. So we've seen this universe before. This is the dystopian future of 1984 and we have an older steve rogers who has no more super serum in him he's just an old man at this point and his buddies luke cage and, and matt murdoch they're all old everybody's old that's the case here they want you to know everybody's old and, of course, their biggest gripe is how much America has changed into basically a police state at this point. You're not allowed to, you know, take selfies out in public. Uh, there's curfews, you know, and it's all because of something called H-Day, which we find out was the Avengers battling Ultron with enhanced beings in it. And somehow or another, the hero still got blamed for everything that kind of happened that day. Legislation was passed because nothing but good things come from more legislation. So as this happens, we go through it and Steve Rogers finally gets tired of enough of this and kind of picks a little fight with some local cops or whatever. And Bubba, they put it to him. Some kids come out and save him, come to find out Luke Cage has been underground this entire time running like a little, I don't know, uh, anti-fascist group. And they're trying to recruit Steve Rogers to come join. He's like, dude, I'm an old man. They really want you to know that everybody's old in this. It got mentioned so many times through it. It was just like it was predictable. And then, of course, no, we, we recreated the super soldier serum. Our super smart girl here did that. So jump on up into the egg thing here so we can make the old man Captain America again. Oh. Oh. The artwork doesn't match this story. I'm just going to go ahead and say that right now. The artwork definitely kind of throws you off a little bit. It's hard to tell what people look like in it because everything's this kind of blurred, weird coloring to it. I didn't much care for that. Um, I've seen this particular scientist and this little underground group before. Uh, every now and then, Marvel will kind of pop into this little thing here. Where it, usually it's a time travel thing. Like it was in an Iron Man comic for there for a while. The same group of people and you know, a little bit of hero worship there. Um, but I don't really care enough about it to really read it anymore. I just, it was a Scotty Young cover and my wife said to pick it up. So that's a horrible review. Two. Oh, sorry. All right, moving on. Something good. Cap Wolf. All right. Cap Wolf is good. I love this. So this concludes our little mini series here. But will there be more? There was a cliffhanger. Uh, I kind of hope there is, but I kind of hope they take a different direction with the story. So in here, we got the Witch Wolf Lady, Werewolf Lady, and Steve Rogers. They're battling out our Easy Company guys. They're squashing all the German people and going back and forth and trying to find a cure. Come find out there is no cure. There's no cure. We can only suppress the werewolfism. I'm not going to get into semantics on that. Fine, let's go with it. If we can keep a universe out there with a werewolf, Captain America, you know what? As ridiculous as it sounds, I'm on board with that. Let's roll. But back to the story. Story concludes. Now, Captain America is going to have werewolf in him forever. Or maybe they'll never address this again. I, honest with you, I don't know. I, I kind of hope they bring it. But again, I didn't like this whole how neatly packaged just got wrapped up at the end. Like the which werewolf just kept trying to convince everybody that if you don't turn into a werewolf, the world will reject you and kick you out and, and nobody loves you because uh, people don't like werewolves. Well, no shit. Like, yeah, that's, that's pretty freaking terrifying. 
<laughs> he, yeah, I, just saying. I'm going to leave that one alone, too. All right, next, Fantastic Four. Uh, this was a great issue. This is issue 16. So, again, still the smartest comic book out there. We kind of talk about um, the process, the process of science, right? You may have heard something to the effect of, hey, you got an idea, right? So you write down, you formulate your idea into a structured, sound conclusion or argument. Congratulations, you just made a hypothesis, right? And uh, I want to show you something. something thumbing through the book as we as I stall with this and then when you come through there you think about all the very uh, the various variables that come to a conclusion and a result this is called a theory right it's like you think the big boom happened this way blah 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 right you're probably like that's my theory no that's your hypothesis right you, you have nothing to really base that off of other than imagination and unfortunately a lot of science and, and just practical thought can't really work under a hypothesis, right? We need a working knowledge of it. So one of the things that came out of this was uh, Robert Boyle, right? Robert Boyle wrote down a list of things that he would really like to see invented uh, and, and created. And the truth is that the entire thing's a thought experiment. So we get the kids that came back, the Fantastic Four kids. They're at their new high school in Arizona, and they kind of get taught this, and they're like, hey, we're super smart because we're Fantastic Four kids. Let's uh, let's make an acid that can eat anything, right? Great idea. It's not even a hypothesis because something, something would have clicked at some point here, right? One of the things that you should be able to figure out in your theory phase as you're walking things out is, What's going to contain the acid? We find a hilarious story in here. What happens when you don't properly process things through in a scientific manner? They create an acid that can eat anything. And it starts to sink to the bottom of the earth. And they can find out how to slow it down with glass, but they can't retain it. And eventually they're going to go to their dad, who worked this problem out once before himself. Science builds off of science. Good science builds better off of old science. And so on and so forth. This was a great, great, great issue kind of explaining that. So they finally got it under control. Oh, they also talked about, like, another thing that you could have fixed in the theory aspect of it, said so just doing it, is they were going to send it out to the sun, right? So what happens when you send something that can eat anything out to the sun? Well, it vaporizes, but it turns into vapor, and those vapors, because there's pressure coming off the sun, go back to the earth, and basically you just microscopically cheese hole the entire earth. So instead of one drop going through, now you have them all over the... Yeah. Crazy, right? It was a great story, and I absolutely enjoyed it. Um, if you have children that are interested in science, or you know kids that are in science, just, just let them enjoy the Fantastic Four right now. I promise you, they'll, they'll pick up the concepts in it. It's great stuff. All right, I got nothing else. That's all I got for this week. Uh... Keep your eyes open this Saturday. I did a, I'm doing a private review of Stellar Lands, a comic book by uh, by Comics uh, Studio. I'm gonna have that for you around noontime on Saturday. So definitely hit that notification bell. Don't forget to subscribe and actually turn on the notifications so when it pops, you can actually see it. Other than that, I got nothing else, guys. I'll talk to you all later. Bye.